Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Today is April 29th, 2022. My name is Scott McGann with the Falmouth Health Department. Doing our weekly COVID-19 update, uh, health at falmouthma.gov is our website. I mean, is our email, 495-7485 is our phone. So let's uh, jump into it. 4,331 uh, cases, uh, these are PCR tests, 66 for the week of PCR for the seven day with 17 probables. I must say uh, there's a fair amount to a, a higher level of, of COVID comparable to the rest, you know, throughout the whole pandemic. Just by, um, it's hard for me to tell exactly how many cases there are because there's home tests, but looking at things like nursing homes, long-term care facilities still report cases. Um, some businesses that have always done it have done it. Um, my circle of people in my life, uh, others' lives, um, you know, I think there's a fair amount of COVID out there right now. Um, the actual number I don't know because of home tests, but I, I, I just by the PCRs and most people uh, gearing, 66 would be a higher than average number for us. And considering the fact that uh, home tests are probably a predominant way of uh, finding out whether you've got it, um, I would say there's a fair amount to a, a higher level of COVID um, than probably would like. Um, it's not, you know, working itself into hospitalizations per se a little bit, but not you know, we're not getting the severity because it tends to be, more, like we said previously, a, more of an upper respiratory. Um, our 14-day incidence rate jumped to 26.8 from 21, and our positivity is at 6.47%, which is higher than 5.12, so it's definitely been jumping. Um, I put a line here. I just was dueling around with it today, and I put a, a, an orange line, a yellowish-orange line, to show when the home test started out. So up here, when you had that Omicron surge in January, that number was definitely way higher. Uh, and it is higher now. I don't know. It could be somewhere between 100 and 200, where I know where, um, you know, with three, almost 400 on our peak week could have been somewhere around 700 or 800. It could have been. Um, so we're not at what January numbers are, but we're at a, definitely a higher number than going across here. Back previous to that, this was all well-captured data because that was um, things were always reported to us when you had to go get and find a test. Um, so I don't know what the exact number is, but it's definitely much higher. I would say somewhere between the 1 and 200 is probably a more accurate number. Um, you know, for different numbers like 40%, I, I think it's going to be more, more than 40% uh, uh, home tests myself. Um, so that's where we are with cases. But we're, we're, gonna, we're trying to get you there off looking at just sheer, sheer case count and looking more towards... Um, and I'll talk about a second more towards uh, the severity of the disease. So you can see a little upward swing here, um, not quite like you saw with the spacing uh, between the dots and the, the fat, vast, fast increase that we had in January, but definitely an increase nonetheless. So um, this is the one we'd like to focus on, which it takes into account not just case counts, but takes into account um, the severity of the disease by basically looking at hospital admissions and hospital bed usage. So we have jumped to the median because we went over 200 cases. We went to 203 for the county. Again, this is done on a county level uh, through the CDC. It's not done by town. Uh, but you see, we went over, and I, thought, I think I said that last week, that we're probably going to be in the medium. So we're below it on hospitalizations, admissions, and uh, inpatient beds. But even that number's jumped. We're at eight uh, per 100,000. So that's somewhere probably around uh, 18 to 20 hospitalizations uh, in the county. Again, not 60, 70 people in the hospital, but still a number that's a bit higher. Again, not everybody's vaccinated. Um, you also have people with immune, weakened immune systems and elderly um, that even with the vaccinations, and even though um, these newer variants aren't quite as strong, especially in the lower respiratory symptoms, COVID pneumonia and things of that nature, still does cause hospitalizations among those people. Um, and then our inpatient staff beds, I was like 1.8 last week, so it jumped up a half a percent to 2.3. So we're solidly in, you know, we were over the line in the, in, for just based on case counts and we went to medium. However, we are getting new admissions, anything over 10 to 20, and we were at eight. So don't know if this is peaked or this is just, you know, gonna fall off or level out, um, but um, those numbers have been increasing. So we're in the uh, medium category. Uh, according to this guidance. And medium just says, if you're immune compromised or at high risk, talk to your healthcare provider about additional precautions such as wearing masks and respirators indoors in public. So again, your, 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 um, your health status. 
Or if you live with someone that has social contact with somebody at high risk, consider testing yourself for infection before you get together. And again, you can consider wearing masks. So not until you get high that they start to recommend it. Um, I, again, last time we did this, um, it's because the state didn't give us any guidance on this. We used the CDC. It was a very tight number. That's why the state didn't adopt it. Um, I don't know how the state feels about this particular guidance, but with the lack of anything else, this is what, uh, what I have for you. Uh, looking at, uh, these are, throughout the entire pandemic, uh, hospital admissions at the top. You can see that going up. The far right would be what's recent. Uh, daily beds use, slight increase, um, not anywhere where we're in a trouble, the hospitals are. And IC, ICU beds, you definitely see that lower. Again, vaccinations, boosters, second boosters, and also things like Paxlovid, which you can give to someone within five days of an onset of symptoms, um, really help sort of... Uh, and then the lack of generally the COVID pneumonia in the lower respiratory, you see a lot less of the ICU beds being used. But you do see an increase in just general beds use. So somebody that went to the hospital that's not in the ICU, you do see a little bit of an increase there. Uh, not quite as high as you see as sort as the admissions. So it seems like maybe people are being admitted and discharged a lot quicker. And again, that could be because of things like Paxlovid and some of the other treatments that we have. And plus, we're in better shape, obviously, than we were in 2020 and 2021. State cases are high, 5% positivity, 3,000 cases. That number's on the high side, 431 patients. Now, that's not a, a bad number per se compared to the number of cases I've seen, you know, you've seen, I've seen it worse, uh, 10 deaths um, in that seven day. Uh, looking at the trends, you see, and then the MD, another trend, MWRA uh, posts that. I, I think I'll do that for next time, MWRA being Boston's metro areas, um, wastewater, they do track. Uh, um, they do track the wastewater for COVID levels, and I think it's real, it's a, it's somewhat flat, so it's not showing necessarily a big jump. I don't know whether we're at sort of this is where we're going to be for a month or so, and then when it gets warmer, maybe come down. But you do see a bit of an increase there. Testing positivity is a bit higher, and hospitalizations are doing the same. But you're not seeing it with deaths. That's sort of flat line again. The reasons I had said previously. Um, as far as we are with our other peers um, in terms of incidence rate, incidence rate is adjusted the population so that we're all equal in terms of our incidence rate. It bases it on 100,000 population. So based on, we would have 26 daily cases if our population was 100,000. Um, we are on the, everybody's sort of clumped in that mid-20s to upper 20s. The state was 28.4 where a lot of us are there. There's a few towns that are lower, mainly on the outer Cape. So and that's kind of where we're at. You know, that's, we're sort of Similar to the rest of the rest of the um, the rest of the county on that positivity states a bit lower. We're on. We have one, two, three, four towns higher. The rest are lower uh, or similar. And so you know we're um, we're a little bit higher. Usually we do a little bit better than this for whatever reason, but that's where we're at with this. Um, so getting into vaccinations again, this number doesn't change too much. This is the uh, number of cases uh, among fully vaccinated individuals. Uh, you see there's been 8,000 hospitalizations among 490 vaccinated people, 1.68. That number's been really st uh, stable, as is deaths, lost by a 0.4648, somewhere in there is where we've been having. So 2,254 deaths attributed uh, through breakthrough cases. Uh, so still, those, these numbers will still tell you that, um, you know, the vaccines work, um, as would the treatments, and so that, um, that number's been in pretty good shape. Uh, booster doses, I don't see anything different. Booster doses, um, thought I was going to get some changes this week. We didn't, but so second booster still off the state website is 50 and older. Second booster at least four months after their first. You can be 18 and older with certain medical conditions or 12 old, older with, uh, with, even more, with different other medical conditions, maybe even some of them the same, at least four months apart. You can mix and match. Um, they do recommend, I think, if you've done the... Um, if you've uh, not done an mRNA, then maybe do an mRNA. Um, there's some details on mass.gov. Um, but uh, so, you know, if you want to do your, um, if you want to do your second booster. Uh, I looked well, earlier in the week, we looked this earlier in the week, there was some, there was some open slots. So we're not at a point where I would be running a clinic because there's, um, there's enough open spots to get it to you so you can get it in the next week or so if you're looking to get your second booster. Again, go on vaxfinder.mass.gov, and it lists all the places that have it, okay? Again, homebound people should be calling the health department. We'll have the VNA go out directly to your home. 
Um, again, testing, home kits are your primary thing what people are using. Again, Falmouth Hospital is still operating, Convenient MD is still operating, the pharmacy is still operating. Okay, and so that's not, nothing's really changed on vaccine availability and testing. Uh, vaccinations, um, we added about 178 doses this week, um, mostly on boosters, a few second doses. This number change is actually a little lower than last week. I think they've made some adjustments. Sometimes I think some of these first doses are actually boosters and then they catch it and they change it around, but this number is actually a couple lower than it was last week. Well, I don't know why. So. Uh, again, strong vaccinations, that's not going to change. What are we looking at for variants? We're seeing this, uh, this I call this BA2.12.1, is, is, is working on its increase. It's going to take out the BA2 variant that came back uh, in February and supplanted the original Omicron. Now that's going to get supplanted by this uh, BA2.12.1, um, which they would name them like storms. But the, that's what we call it. So that's sort of that. And then again, that'll come up take over, then another one will probably come and take over. So you see sort of this ebb and flow. This was all orange for Delta before the holidays. Then we get into the new year, it takes over by Omicron and purple, then this BA2 takes over in pink, and now this reddish uh, color, that variant will take over, and we'll just keep following this trend as we go along. Um, face coverings, recent removal of the federal requirement with regards to transportation. I think that's still up in the air. I, don't, I haven't really looked this week to see what, if there's been any changes to it. We don't have any mask requirements other than an advisory in town-owned buildings. The select board kept that in. Um, so nothing's changed with that. Other than we're in, we're in yellow, and, and you can look at that yellow and say, you know, you have somebody in your family or yourself that's a severely immune compromised, and you should consider um, uh, face coverings. So as a recap, our case counts increased again this week, and then the county moved to the yellow. So we're, we, we definitely have more COVID uh, than I can really report. Again, because the home test, that'll be the way it is. Um, again, you are seeing a little bit of increase in hospitalizations. Uh, that's what we really need to focus on. There's plenty of vaccine testing capability. Second boosters are available. There are no mass mandates uh, considered based on your individual circumstances. So that's what I have for the week, um, and I'll uh, do an update again uh, shortly. And so everybody have a good weekend. Thanks.